Hey there, it's Chris with Footbridge Media, and welcome to the Footbridge Media Weekly Roundup, where we take online marketing and contractor adjacent news from the week, boil it down into a few short notes so you can stay in the loop without wasting too much of your time. For the week of January 11th, 2024, five articles for you today. First one, success isn't magic, it's goals and planning. You have the news, ACHR news. So if people have personal New Year's Eve resolutions, businesses should have the same. They should have goals and a game plan for making their dreams come true. The planning is the important part there. So this blog hits on three key questions you should be asking yourself as a business owner. Number one, what are my goals for this year? Not the generalities of I want more business or the insane that I have one truck, but in 2024, I want 50 mil in revenue. Think more practically. Think about where you can reduce costs or maybe improve your productivity. Think about goals that you can actually achieve. Uh, they can be stretches, but goals that you can actually achieve for the year. Number two, who is my audience? Finding the right past customer segment, profitable neighborhoods, specific service types that maybe are desirable. What would create your ideal job? And number three, what changes can I make to meet my goals and to reach my audiences? That's it. That's the, the big question there. You need to identify those things that are blocking you from reaching your goal and address them so that you can create change. From Gizmodo, this one's called the dumbest Google result of the week. I actually originally saw this on Twitter uh, via Lily Ray, who's an SEO with a big presence on Twitter, basically about the same thing about how Google sometimes doesn't work out so great. So if you do a Google search, and as of when I recorded the video, this still works. Uh, if you do a Google search for JFK death penalty, that specific phrase, the first thing that comes up is a Google Doc, and it appears to be an essay from a middle schooler. It starts off with how JFK was an interesting man. The second result, it's admittedly outdated from a technical standpoint. It's not SSL secure. The website actually says best viewed using Adobe. Be flash, but it's a website that was built by the JFK Presidential Library and Museum, and that ranks seconds to this random Google Doc. Further down the page, ironically, is actually this Gizmodo article now. It's just a good demonstration of how sometimes Google has a hard time figuring out what results are the best to show. Have a little bit of humor in the day. Think about that, that specific problem that Google has today. The next one here is My Six M's of Social Media. This is via Search Engine Journal. It's actually an excerpt from a book called Organic Social Media by Jenny Lee Fowler. The article basically hits up, like it says, the proposed six M's, their proposed framework for how you can create a social media strategy that's pretty solid. So the six M's, mission, what's your goal for the social media endeavor? Message, what are the stories you're gonna tell to support your goals? Management, what systems are you gonna use? How are you gonna craft and post your content? Medium, what social media channels and platforms are the right choice for your mission and for your message? Metric, what does success look like? How are you gonna track that? What numbers and stats mean success to you? And monitoring, what is your audience saying about you? And can you use that to further craft or tweak your mission and your methods and everything else? So this fourth one was a very interesting one that I've seen a lot of SEOs talking about how Google perfected the web via The Verge in what's a little bit of a trippy format, uh, which is what The Verge does with a lot of the long format stuff. This article breaks down some of the basics about how Google works and about how SEO works. But the overall theme here is that Google, for better or worse, is shaping the web to its will. So the idea here that websites can't just be unique to be good. They must adhere to specific rules, formats, and guidelines to gain visibility on Google and how that's a bad thing. There's a little bit of back and forth here. They both critique Google for making websites follow these rules to get visibility, but they also praise Google for creating web standards that make web browsing better in general. You think about page speeds and SSL and security and all that. There are also a few bad assumptions here. Uh, they suggest that a big old wall of text is easier to read than something that's choppy and, and broken up with subheadings that define content sections. Uh, at one point, they also take a real big leap and they decide that for some reason, because they're doing all these things for Google, they now must have spammy looking ads and media because Google. I didn't quite get the connection there. At the end of the day, The Verge is suggesting Google is the reason why websites almost look the same, which to a point, I understand. When we build websites exclusively for Google, when we are writing Google first and building Google first, as this article talks about, they don't usually look great or function great. Think about any recipe you've ever Googled where you have to get through someone's life story before you get the recipe. But also Google's in the business of making you come back to Google again. So over time, all these things get fixed. They always continue to modify their processes to try to give you the content that keeps coming back. The flip side of the criticism that Google is stifling this type of unique content is that this content is not there for art's sake. The content is there for a business purpose. So if you want visibility, your business has to play by the rules. It's like complaining the city's out to get you because you can't build an unsafe brick and mortar storefront with a 100 foot tall neon sign just because your city has building inspectors and municipal codes. Google is the game, so you gotta play by the rules. Your creative urges to have a weird website be damned. And the final one here via All Business, how to outsource work, six tips for small businesses taking the leap. This one helps to not raise my blood pressure so much talking about it. Basically, this is about outsourcing. This article discusses when you should consider outsourcing work tasks and functions that make your business run a little more smoothly. It asks if you're spending too much time doing non-critical tasks and determining what non-core functions to your business could safely be given away to run to someone else without compromising how you work and how you operate. Overall, you need to be strategic about the process, defining your reasons and goals for wanting to outsource specific 
specific tasks, evaluating solid partners, and setting expectations for how the process should work to benefit your business. That does it for this week. Hopefully we've saved you a few extra clicks, helped to keep you up to date on some recent news while helping you to stay on task for the day. Footbridge Media clients, as always, can reach out to their marketing consultants and the marketing team here at Footbridge with any questions or concerns. If you're not already a Footbridge Media client and your online marketing could benefit from our experience and a little bit of streamlining and simplification, Footbridge Media is here to help. You can always get more information about us online at footbridgemedia.com.